another Chinese industrial component. This is a dinial mounting time switch, and its spe specification side it says 220 volt AC, um, 1 times 16 amp, uh, which is the switching. But then it says in brackets afterwards, I think it's an 8. Is that an 8? Yes, it is. Now, the 16 amp relates to its resistive switching capability, and the 8 in the brackets afterwards is for inductive loads like transformers and things like that. 24 hours, 7 day, and the reserve is 3 to 5 years, which is quite a long time for that. That'll be the backup. Um, and you consider that uh, time switches are a really common device. It makes sense that the industrial version, I would expect, to be very similar to one of these cheapy plug-in in ones, because it, it just basically has the same functions. It'll have the same chip. So this one, uh, oh, I should say, this one came from... Oh dear, a bit suspicious. It says it came from... Princess Dress 08, and someone recently said, you, you know, if you see someone selling ladies' clothing and beanie hats, then you shouldn't be buying technical components from them. I don't disagree with that. I think China is just, you know, it's, it's a lot of this stuff is generic modules and components, and it's not unusual to find uh, ladies' lingerie alongside Arduino modules and stuff like that. The sellers might not 100% know what they're selling, but, you know, they're just selling stuff that's popular, people buy it, so... In this case, it cost uh, $9.30, approximately £6.44, and it is just a DIN rail mounting time switch, so let's uh, take a look at it. I do like the industrial stuff from China. They use a lot of it themselves. First thing I'm noting is that the packaging with it is uh, it, it's quite neat that it's quite well packed. You know, the packaging is designed around this alone. It's like a dedicated packaging for the timer. I suppose I should look at the instructions. But uh, to be honest, I kind of know typically what's involved in a, a timer. I don't think I'm going to really learn a lot from this, but I might read them later on in case there's some secret feature that I don't know about. So I have this out and I set the timer earlier on. It does seem to be holding the time properly. And really, it is fundamentally the same as you'd find well, once you flip this lid up. It's... That's one niggle I've got. The lid window is so far back from the display that you'd pretty much have to shine a torch through to see it, but you can just flick it up. Um, and it's just got the usual functions. It's got the, you hold the clock button down to set the time uh, and the day, and it's got the same th annoying feature that these ones have, like all these digital time ones have, that the days are always in a row at the top. And if the LCD display, you know, it'd be nice if they just added a wee bit extra glass on just to make the display bigger so that you can actually see those. But that's a common problem, you know. All of them seem to do it. It just means you have to angle it to actually be able to see what the uh, what day you've selected. But uh, it's just it lets you choose between on, off, manual, uh, automatic. Um, it's got the, yeah, just the generic time switch features. It's also got a little red uh, LED in here. Well, I see it's red plastic. I assume that's an LED. It does say on. Yeah, I'm guessing that's. I've not tried this out yet. But anyway, uh, what we really want to know is what the build quality is like inside. So um, let's pop it open. Hoping this isn't just going to fall to bits. I don't think this is all that's really holding it together is these clips. This is uh, for mounting a DIN rail. It's got the DIN rail catch down here. Um, just a standard... Metal Strip Deutschland International Normal, I believe it stands for, which uh, is used in control panels. It's a universal mounting for circuit breakers and, and these sort of things. Okay. Right, in keeping with uh, with even this type of thing, it's got a power card and then it's got the display and button card. All the electronics will be on this module. There'll probably be a wee... Yes, I can see it. There's a wee chip on board, a wee resin blob underneath this display, which will not only be driving the display, but will be doing all the timing functions. Uh, crystal? Yep, there's a crystal. All the usual things. Um, the little 32.768 kilohertz crystal that's used as a common time reference. I'm looking at these pads here. It says S1, S2, and it looks like... It doesn't look like they're for putting a component across. Not really sure. I wonder if that's for setting options by linking them out. I'm not really sure. I'll let you take a closer look at that. I do see a little LED at the side here, which is obviously the indicator for when it's on. So let's... Uh... OK. Quite a chunky, really. 
that's uh, a bigger relay than I was expecting. Look at the back of that. Um, the relay has huge anti-tracking slots between its contacts, and they've doubled up in the contacts, so it looks like it's going to be quite robust. And there's good separation from the input to the output. I'm guessing that, you know, um, I'm not 100% sure. Does it really need such major separation? I suppose it keeps the, the mains away from the electronics. On the input, uh, it's got what looks like an improvised track view. is a really zigzaggy track here. But it's also got a resistor here that's also going to be a fusible resistor, I'm guessing. It's got a, a metal oxide resistor here for tr suppressing transients, uh, taking the spikes off the incoming supply. This is going to be part of a capacitive dropper, yep. So that's going to the rectifier. That's going through that resistor to the rectifier. So this is a capacitive dropper it's based on. Let's see what value that is. Three hundred and thirty nanofarad. It's a six hundred and thirty volt capacitor. That's quite generous, actually. Yeah, that's quite a beefy capacitor. It's not a class X two capacitor, but that's that's not a bad start. Two capacitors here. Two electrolytics uh, separated by what looks like a. Three K resistor. Is that a resistor or is that a small inductor? I'm guessing it might be a resistor. I'm just going to double check that right now. It will probably be using ah, uh, you know what? That's what it will be. It will be using a fairly high voltage. Yes, three K. It'll be using a fairly high voltage on this side, probably about 24 volts, probably clamped to the zener, I'd guess, as is usually the case with these. Is there a zener in the vicinity? Zener diode. That looks like the zener diode that's tied in to keep the voltage down to about, uh, probably about, what's the relay rated at? And 24 volts. They tend to go for a fairly highish voltage and DC voltage in the relay. Uh, I mean, that's not super high, but the point is that as the voltage goes up, the current required to operate goes down. That means they can use the smaller resistor, uh, capacitor in the dropper. Quite often, uh, if you'd measure maybe about 24 volts across the electrolytic, and then the, when the relay was actually activate, activated, the voltage would drop a little bit, but it was still enough to hold the relay in. So that resistor will be trickling current across to this side of the power supply, which will be dealing with the actual circuit, which will probably operate at a much lower voltage. Not 100% sure what voltage it will operate at. There's another Zener diode to cap it. And then there's the, um, there's the backup battery there, just a standard little nickel metal hydride type cell, which is probably very similar to the types, well, it looks very similar to the type found in the little garden lights. The solar ones. I'm not percent sure what this resistor's for. Brown, green, red, 1.5k. Not sure what that's for. There's plenty of anti-tracking slots. Those ones are most notably there, but there's also uh, one here to separate from the uh, main side to the sort of reduced voltage. The spacing all looks pretty good. The quality of construction looks decent. This little module can be unplugged, which would lose its timing if I did that, because um, it would disconnect it from its little backup uh, battery. You know, on the whole, this actually looks pretty good. You can't obviously guarantee just how good, you know, the quality of the relay is or anything like that. Um, it's not a brand name like Finder. Well, it says Songle. I'm not 100% sure how good Songle are. 
But on the whole, you know, looking at this as it is, um, it, the quality doesn't seem too, too bad. It seems like some logic has been used in, in making it. I wonder how resilient it is to inductive transients. Um, in the past, I've used plug-in time switches to bring in contactors, and the digital time switches, when the contactors came in, sometimes crashed. They just didn't seem rated for inductive uh, loads of the contactor coming in. Or in, a, in another case, it was being used to... A completely different scenario. It was being used, a time switch like this was being used to control metal halide discharge lamps. And I'm guessing it was the inrush surge of current to the uh, capacitor, the power fact crash capacitor in them, made the contacts in these weld. Um, so um, I wonder how resilient this is to stuff like that. It's, it's a better relay, better quality relay. And um, it, that, certainly that filtration, the the fact that uh, there's the 24 volt supply, then it trickles over across to this other capacitor should also provide some sort of filtering separation uh, to keep the sort of mains transients from the the incoming side away from the circuitry. But um, there's only one way to find out, and that's to find a decent inductive load to switch. I'm trying to think I've got one of those. But, um, you know, on the whole, uh, it's pretty good. Uh, I, qu I quite think that's quite uh, well built inside. It's not cheap and nasty. It looks a modestly robust build. OK, I couldn't resist hooking it up, so I've got it connected to the mains now. And uh, its power consumption is really low. It's a, I, I'm not 100% sure exactly how much. It says 1 watt here. That's kind of in the low end of the scale, so I'm not sure how accurate it's going to be at that level. One interesting quirk, the red LED is quite dull. That's not that uncommon. But when you actually turn it on, if I do it now, there's a very short delay in going on and then off again never really noticed that in other switches. It's not nothing really major, it's like almost like a sort of one second delay. Odd. Now, I wonder uh, if it is, uh, let's see, what's the dissipation, the current, should I say? The current uh, through the capacitive dropper is about 26 milliamps, and I'm wondering, you know, 26 milliamps, if that zener's dropping, uh, if that's limiting to 24 volts, 24 volts times 0 0.026, uh, it's going to be dropping about 0 0.6 watt, and that was a small surface mount zener. The temptation is to just pop this open again, power it up, and then use the thermal imaging camera just to see how hot that zener is getting. So I'm going to do that right now. Oh yeah, this has a very clever trick. If I measure the voltage across the relay coil now, because the relay coil's on, it measures approximately... 20 volts because it's pulled in it's just pulled drop the voltage down a bit which is fine it means it's actually dissipating less than it would if it was running at 24 volts all the time but if i uh oh i should uh, i'll tilt this up and across now I've, I disconnect the power to it i'll keep in mind that these connections are live at mains voltage and there's mains all over it but uh, i know that so uh, if i now also measure with the power on so the relay is active if i measure across this resistor this mystery resistor here The voltage across it is zero. It's not active at the moment. However, if I then bridge uh, one of these contacts with a, the metal tip but holding the insulated handle of a screwdriver, so I want to bridge it to, there we go. I've turned the relay off and now there's no voltage across the relay but if I measure across this resistor now, so I can get a connection without shorting something out and having a nasty instant. Oh, not getting it here. I'm getting about 24 volts across that resistor. And the reason for that is that uh, rather than use Zener diodes to try and clamp it down, they're effectively using the resistor as a dummy load when the relay is off. And that's sort of regulating the voltage down. The capacitor there will let through a certain amount of current. Uh, in the case of this, uh, I can do the maths for that, because it's a 1,500 ohm resistor. Um, make sure that's powered off before I start poking things about. So it's got about 24 volts across it. Uh, I equals V over R. So that's 24 volts divided by the 1,500 ohms. It means it's passing about 16 milliamps, which means it'll be dissipating uh, times the 24 volts across it, about 0.4 watts. And it was the only hot component, and, and it wasn't that hot. It was the only hot component in the unit, because I ended up, uh, I had to sniff it out with a thermal imaging camera to find out what was the hottest component. And uh, 
That's that's quite neat because that means that is fundamentally the only load, uh, and that is basically my meter was showing about one watt, but it does it's not super sensitive and it gets down to those ultra you know below one watt. So I'd say the unit is actually dissipating about half a watt uh, in standby. Um, it's really not that much at all. So it's very clever. I, I really like that. It, it takes all the strain off things like the Zener diodes in the back. They're just being used to clamp down to sort of maybe a sort of. Uh, I'm not sure the voltage uh, on those seniors was. It might have been capping it down for a different section of the circuitry. Um, but it means that they don't have to dissipate that amount of power uh, if they were actually 24 volt seniors. So it's very clever, the fact. It also, uh, initially when I was looking at it, I couldn't work out why that resistor had its own transistor and the relay had its own transistor. And it's because they are alternating between the two when one's on, the other's off, and vice versa. That's very clever. I've never seen that done before. It's very neat indeed. So, um... Uh, it, it seems well and thoughtfully designed. It actually seems quite an interesting little unit. Uh, it seems pretty good. OK, well, I was quite intrigued by something. Instead of just having the... If you look at the front of this, it's got uh, seven button options, one of which is the reset, but the... Uh, the manual uh, function where you can choose whether it's on, off or automatic has one big button but it's got two separate pads and there are a separate pad for each, you know, one of those and each is labelled RS and MAAD. I'm not 100% sure that is. Um, but they're separate pads but they're both form performing the same function even though they have their own contact and they are electrically separate. They're not, uh, they've got one common at one side but the other uh, side is definitely separate connections going up and uh, they're not electrically connected. So this does have other functions uh, which uh, maybe is what these little pads at the back are for for setting, I'm not 100% sure. And the only sort of hint I can get at that, looking at the instructions, is it mentions Auto time error correction plus or minus 60 seconds weekly. And what that comes to mind is that maybe if it's losing like five seconds a week, you can actually, if you're timing it really accurately, you can then tell it, you know, to, in, you know, add every week that, that five seconds back. Or you can sort of calibrate it to much more accurate timing. But that's the only thing I can really find here. Um, it also says it's got a power reserve of three years with a lithium battery. Now, I don't think that's lithium. I think that's nickel metal hydride. Hold on, where's the meter? If it was lithium, I'd expect that to be uh, 3 volts or so. So let's measure the voltage cross. If it's nickel metal hydride, it'll be about 1.2-ish. It's 1.2, it's nickel metal hydride. So, um, yeah. Also, if you look at the Chinese instructions, it's got a bit more information. It does say 1.2 volt, 40 milliamps. So that's presumably actually talking about that battery there. It's 40 milliamp power. So I'm not sure if there's a, another version of this timer with that, you know, that extra button uh, made available and with some other function. Um, part, part of me is tempted to short these pads out, but without actually knowing, there's, there's no clue in the display or anything, but without actually knowing what function I'm, I'm looking for, it could be a bit of an enigma. But, um, yes, it's, it's quite interesting. It's a little puzzle. Yeah, neat little thing. 